Hello, welcome to another Studio Central live art demo on Facebook. We are here at Upbeat Artworks, which is our gallery of art that shows off the art of Artbeat alumni. And we are right across the hall from Studio Central where you can come in person to join our art workshops. But for anyone that can't be there in person at the time or wants to rewatch these videos, um, we have these lives for you. So before we get right into our painting, which we will be doing for our workshop today, we're gonna showcase one of our artists that painted this beautiful painting behind me. So I will flip the camera around, show you off some of their art while Kate reads the, the bio. Logan Powell was born in Winnipeg in 1996. He took art classes all through school and later taught himself his current techniques watching Bob Ross and Stuart Davis on YouTube. I pretty much have their techniques down pat, he smiles. Professionally, he learned carpentry and developed it into working on building custom rock homes, including wonderful for four million. Carpentry has taught me how to complete projects, starting from zero and working with dedication until it's done, Logan says. The main body of Logan's work is focused on mountains, painted from his imagination on canvas in oils, his preferred medium. Since a trip to Calgary, when the mountain views blew my mind, he says, his mountains have improved. They're solid and sharply focused. In contrast with the rough spring grasses in the foreground, the moving clouds in the background, which are handled with expansive, painterly brush strokes. Logan has also created a concept piece he describes as sort of off-brand for me. It reflects his feeling as an accused for indigenous people. Featuring a forest, forest in monochrome, with the black footsteps representing all the faces of the superior individuals and an entire people's lack of voice. Lately, Logan has branched off into painting human figures. Artbeat was great, very inclusive. I learned a lot from the other artists, Logan says. It also let him experiment with acrylics and make ceramics, including an Easter Island head unlike anything I've done before. But landscapes remain my trademark, he adds. Photo by Joanne Peters, bio by Michael Rennie. Yes, it's a face you'll see around the studio often. Um, I would like to complain to Kate about putting the painting so high and making me reach up <laughs> so I can show them off. But I'll survive this one this time. <laughs> This direction, but oh, you can look at your work while you're doing it. Oh, yeah. That would probably make it easier. That probably will make it easier, yes. Um, yeah, if there are some paper towels, that would be great to have. That is the only material I do not grab here. And it's slightly detrimental at the time that I get a paper towel to dab <laughs> in my piece. But it's okay if it doesn't happen. That's um, also fine. Oh. I'll try a wet wipe. We'll see experiment with that just for the moment. But yeah, if you could grab the paper towel, I'd be coming with some color, but oh, it worked. Okay, great. Yeah. All right, well, not to the level I would be if you like I feel like we'll use some paper towels, would be great. But I just wanted to have an example of my mood. So hello, hello, we're going to start today. Um, we're going to do, everybody keep on the table, this is a very fun little <laughs> intimate live stream moment. Normally when I do the live streams, I am just like me to the camera and that's all. So it'll be fun to do like in-person teaching as well as camera teaching too. That's a little bit of a challenge. Um, I tried making a quick, quick example, but it doesn't really turn out as I wanted it to, but I'm still going to show it as what we're doing here. 
Um, so we're gonna make, I was thinking, because it's almost kind of spooky season, not quite yet, we don't, I don't know, do we wanna decorate? Does anybody have Halloween decorations up? No. No? Not yet. Not yet, oh well. Studio Central, we almost started yesterday, but I thought we could wait just one more moment. So, we're gonna put them up on Monday. Paper towels, lovely. Thank you, thank you. Um, so, this example isn't gonna be too great to show, but it gives you an idea. Um, it gives you an idea here where we're going to be doing two types of masking techniques with our watercolor today. Um, one is using um, masking tape, painter's tape. This one is just from Dollarama. Um, I got it though because it was so wide, and we were commenting on that earlier, is that you can actually, if you go to certain art stores too, you can get this paper, this uh, masking tape, like you can get really thin, you can also get something like this. And the reason we wanted a wide one is because with our masking technique, we're going to be cutting out our circles in our painter's tape. So we're gonna have circles here that we cut out, we put on our paper, and then we have another masking technique that we're gonna try out, and that is this medium here. This is called masking medium. Now in the past, I've always used um, temporary fixative for masking, or a temporary masking material, and not the one that I used before, I'm so sorry. Uh, this is a permanent masking medium. So how this works is that um, for this example, and this I made about 20 minutes ago, so it's a little, tried to see the paper technique of what I wanted to do with the watercolors I was using. So let me put this with my, my tester sheet or my scrap sheet. So I could see here, this area, I was adding a lot more water. Um, and in this area, rather than adding the wet on the paper first, I was actually just using my pigments in my palette, my soldier's palette, and wetting that, making sure I didn't have a lot of water on my brush, and just taking from that portion. Um, a really nice thing with watercolors, and one of the best parts of it, is that you can mix your own colors. So some palettes will come with a tray that goes over top, and that's where you can mix in your colors. But this one here has like six little spots in the front, and also you can always use this here too. Um, you can get those painter's palettes that you'll put like um, acrylic in, you can get water ones of those, and you can just use it for watercolor too. The best part is that even though this is all dry here, that is still very usable color. You can just wet your brush and reactivate it, and then you can use that color for something else, which is really great. You can always mix them too. So that's why how you can get really cool, deep, rich colors when you're mixing. Um, it's always going to depend on the type of watercolor though. So like I was saying before we started rolling, um, the blue palette there, that one is more of our student grade material of watercolor, um, which means that the pigments inside just aren't as rich. Um, it's cheaper, which means that it's able to access it anywhere. You can get a couple of those from the dollar store. Um, but you can still, you know, a lot of people still really like that. They like the lighter colors versus like some of the darker pigments there. But this is showing I use the same palette, but I'm having the darker colors up here and then the lighter. But if you notice, there's all these little spots here, and this was also my experiment today, was how if you're doing the moon, you want stars in the sky. So if you're doing watercolor, you can't add lighter color on top of dark color. You can do certain techniques to lift the color. So we have paper towel, which you can lift when it's wet and you can actually get patterns removed if you like crunch up your paper towel a certain way. You can use that as like an imprinting pattern to remove some color. But this here is what this masking tape is. So the one I was saying earlier is you have used ones that you can remove. So you'll put it on here, let it dry, do your painting, and then once everything's completely dry, you actually can use your finger and rub the masking tape off and then it's clean underneath then you could always paint where it is there too. So say if you want to add like a specific highlight or you know you want to like paint like a person standing in this really magical forest and the forest is made of watercolor but you want to blend a lot and you want to have a lot of mixed colors, um, then that's where that masking fluid comes in where you'll put it down, do all your painting and then remove it after. This stuff being permanent means that it dries relatively clear but I, as much as I scratch or rub it off, I won't be able to, and I also won't be able to add color on top of this after. So that's why I thought it would be kind of cool to use this as stars. But you're welcome to use it if you want. You also can just kind of do it your own way there. Do you want to pass it to yourself, can you show it? Yep. Okay. 
So that we also have had that in the um, removable mask but I don't think I can see that very well. So first step for this, you can decide if you want to um, add a border to your watercolor piece. I always feel that makes me very happy with my end result mm -hmm. um, because then it kind of feels framed. This one, even though it was my tester, I might work with it more and I might like crop the edges so it's just a straight picture. But also you can use it so if you want the edges to be like a little like, like kind of like this edge here where it's like a little bit raw and this one here too. So if you want to kind of do something with your edge, you're welcome to. But if you want to tape it, you can do that. Um, maybe I will tape mine. Where'd my paper go? <laughs> oh, I think <laughs> I'll take that one. Ollie, there's another one on the table when you wherever you come back to. Um, so just for example, I'm going to um, paint, put a border on here. Um, also noting which side I used for this piece. I think it was. It's really hard to tell the difference of them. I think it was one just a little bit more flexible. I'm going to still use the same one. So for um, this, it is a very thick tape. So if I was going to use this for like masking um, a border, if I do a whole piece like that, I'm going to get a very thick border, which I may want, may not. Um, I can like rip the tape in half to conserve more tape. But technique that I've taught folks at Studio Central, and what I'll teach you all here too, um, is if you're worried about the paper being too sticky and you don't want to like rip your paper after, you can put it on your clothing or a pair of pants or something, and it'll pick up just enough dust that it won't rip your paper after. So you may have, like if you're going to paint a wall or really fine detail, there may be a little bit of dust on there that's in the next so if you don't want that. Um, but I think I'm going to do it, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to start really well to rip this in half. Is anyone else going to do more? Oh, you can do it in there. Um, and then I'm going to show the moon cutting technique with that too. But um, I have one already done on here. So also, we have two different shapes or sizes of moons too. Like if you're wanting a smaller one, this is a template. And if you want a big one, this is the template for that. So this last picture I did, I used the big template. Um, if we do the smaller one, we'll use that one. No, which one? Oh, I use this one here. So if we want to do a smaller moon, you can also do your picture to have like um, a landscape in it if you want. You can have the moon over the ocean. You could have the moon really anywhere. The picture I did as an example, I don't know how good it's going to be ripping this one in half, but we're trying our best, but let's <laughs> just if you need. Scissors are necessary, but I'm trying my darndest. Um, yeah, if you can decide if you want to use like your piece in the you know, landscape in the background. You can decide if you just want it as the sky. I think I'm going to do a night sky again. That way I can do like the, um, the stars. The stars technique. So if you both, if you're not going to do a border, if you want to kind of size, if you want a bigger one or a small one on your paper, just a small one. So it'll be a good example then I can use to cut the small one that I'll show. What we're doing is we're going to cut ourselves a little um, stencil made out of tape. So these are just cut here, and I can do my other side after. It's always ripping off more of the masking tape following. It's always so fun. But so for this here, is anyone using a big moon they're going to decide? Or I'll do the, you're going to use a big one? Great. And would you like to cut the moon and try that out? Or would you like to use a pre cut? Ooh, oh, I know. I have one pre cut. That's, that's, that's the trick. Okay. Okay, you gotta use a pre cut? Okay. okay. <laughs> Well, if not, I'm going to either, I myself is going to use it, or if they'll use a small one. May I see your round piece there? See if this is another tape, oh, or do you oh, use one more? Let me see. Yeah. Oh, okay, I got it. So this is the trick. So this is why I'm also using it on um, a lid. So I just have this lid that's an older one, but we've had it in the back of the studio. Um, because the tape, if I'm cutting, like, say, 
I'm cutting it into strips, like further into strips. I want it on like a plastic or a harder material that's not going to take away too much stickiness. And because this is like not porous, the tape's going to be sticky afterwards. But it's not going to take away too much stickiness, but I can still cut on it and not worry because it's just an older lid that we've had. It still works as a lid afterwards. But now that we have picked um, our tape down, and we're using a smaller piece, I'm going to just put it down and take um, a darker color that we can see on where the green tape is and trace around it. Very simple like that. Um, and now we will cut it with a uh, exacto. Um, I'm just cutting it, you know, don't put too much pressure because you're just trying to cut one layer of tape. Um, and because it is round, it's kind of nice because you can kind of turn it as you cut. The only trick is that you have to see where you started cutting and where you stopped cutting. And if you back it down a little. So that's where you will, don't want to put too much pressure as you're cutting because that's easier to have like those really jagged lines when you're cutting. Whatever you want it to be, that's not my Bob Ross quote. It's our picture, we can make it however we want. Bob Ross? Yeah. Um, so I have cut out the circle here, and now that we have it there, I can fill up this corner, and this is all kind of cut out, so we have a little circle. Um, now, the fun part, you have to decide where you're going to put your Um, and I'm going to fill this up. So, um, did you decide if you wanted to do to cut your own lid, or did you like that? And Colby, what size would you like? Oh, big one. one. Big one? Okay. And do you want to cut them in yourself, or would you like that? The other tricky part is lifting it off. This is where um, there is an art right now that a lot of folks are doing that will have small businesses, and it's called using a cricket, those cricket machines. Um, and you cut, you have this machine that cuts the vinyl for you, and then you have to pick off the letters and then read. I have so many bubbles in there, I don't know how I could do it. Here's your moon, your free moon sticker. And Chloe, I'll give a moon to you. And you've decided on a larger moon. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I don't know, um, I don't know how people can lift it without feeling the sticker or losing the sticker or something sharp, maybe something yeah. 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 I hope the model just doesn't come off on your feet. I'm gonna take this one just in case the model comes off. I don't <laughs> it shouldn't, but I'm nervous for it, so I'm just gonna take it. Just in <laughs> case. Yeah. So and I think where should I put my name? Not in the middle, a little up to the side. I'm gonna do something kind of similar to where you are. Oh, are you doing a vertical one? That's a good idea. It's the hardest decision is choosing. Can we have more than one move? Of course. You can have as many moves as you'd like. Yeah, you can make a whole piece of that move. Yeah, I think that would be a good idea. Yeah, I think I've, I've, even though I put it on sideways, I think I'm going to keep it up this way. We'll do it like that way better. Yeah, so you'll trace that circle up there. Very good. So now that we're, um, we need one more. We want to round it. Oh, we'll put it on this side. But what we'll do is we'll kind of do this in stages too, just because we have one more step that, um, while you are ripping out your piece there, um, we're going to do the step that takes the moving up with the thing. So if you'd like stars, I'm going to also put stars in this piece. And it's going to take a moment to dry, and that's why we're going to do these two first. Then we're going to keep adding on the moons, and then yours will dry too, and we can keep going our steps that way. Um, but I brought a piece of paper that was on the chair, Holly, and that's our splash zone. So <laughs> this material can be um, thinned out with water as well. Uh, just because it is the first time of using it, I wonder how we want to, <laughs> maybe you can figure out how if you wanted to do, um, to film it and fold it, I don't know. I feel I'm going to stand up for this one. 
So the time of the trick will be... So you're painting that on first? Yes, so the thing is, what we're going to do is we're going to paint the background sky right now. But then with that background sky, um, we're going to want those stars put in first. So once the stars are dry is when we actually can start putting in that background. So it'll be um, easier. I'm wondering maybe if we could... Uh, there's so many people around the table right now. This is where we're, we're balancing our thing. Yeah. Um, maybe do we want to do it like here? Let's do it here. Yeah, and then we'll keep. We'll, move, we'll put yeah. the Let's one put paper it away. And... It's the art shuffle. Yeah. Good old art shuffle. We'll just put this one. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, we don't want it to be too much going everywhere. We don't want it to be too much going everywhere, so I'll just lift that up so it just goes on um, in that paper, which just keeps moving. Here, paper towel. That's what we need paper towels for. Nothing to see here on the camera, don't worry. It wouldn't be alive if it didn't spill it wouldn't something. Be. Does that happen frequently in your life? Not frequently, but well, it's happened. That's what happens when Marissa's is here. Just keep working on this thing. I like how it happened and it was just a gasp, not a, <laughs> oh no, it's Bill, just, oh. <laughs> I processed, the, I processed <laughs> that very slowly. <laughs> oh my lord, I <laughs> too much fun. Woo. The tables are so small here. Oh geez. So it's just a little, my hands are a little sticky. <laughs> Um, it's a little white for real. Is this one yours? Mine. Yours. Oh, great. This one's also mine. Oops. It's fine. All right. So now that I'll clean up that after, um, there, just a tiny bit more. Wow, look, my hands are so, so sticky. There we go. And this is why I can be thin before. So this will be all that we need for all of these pieces, and we can probably use another, um, use it for something else too, which is great. But I'm taking this brush, you could use a brush that has, you can use a brush that has a, like a toothbrush, um, or one that is clean before you flick the paint. Otherwise you're going to get your dust everywhere in there. But very, very simple, we're going to, um, Take it and so all the just the front of the brussels is um, wet, and this is a artificial hair brush with vinyl. I think so it's not going to absorb any of that thing. I made that up. I don't know if that's real or not. But then you'll just be smacking it on your finger, and this is why we're in this flash zone here. So it's just the little dots that we have there. Fun, and just like that, we have. You can see. Yeah. Uh, Let's zoom right in. And yeah. Do you want to do more? Yes. So you can dab it on there. And I would just, once you have it on there, just put your finger and snap it on the paper a few times. Or you can do, but whatever one you want. See what works best. Yeah, that one works. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so that gives quite Ooh. a bit of. Yeah, quite a bit of splash. So also the thing is too, we don't know really what it looks like until the very end. So now it's a little bit wet. If you mm -hmm. want to not have too much, you can always take this and clean mm -hmm. a spot if you want, like a paper towel. I just, yeah, I just moved around. And everywhere you're gonna do that is where there's mm -hmm. gonna be watercolor that won't go. Mm -hmm. So note on that too. Um, so now you're ready to be part of the splash zone if you like that as well. This is gonna be drying, so we're gonna need that moment to dry a bit. And in between too, once you are using a type of fluid, like a masking fluid, you're going to want to have it like be soaking in between if you're kind of taking your time in between brushes or pieces you're using, because this will clog up your brush very, very fast. Um, so we're gonna take this and just, because you don't want it wet either, we're not gonna get a good spraying that way. So I'm just gonna try as best I can to get stuff out of the bristles um, in a relatively clean manner. <laughs> okay, this should be good. So you can either do the way that Kate did that way or the way that I did like that way. And just 
do a little dab in there. I do a dab, a little more. Perfect. And then it shakes off. And then, do you want to handle what you're doing there, or do you want to? Um, yeah. I think I want to do very slow. Then that's okay. We'll cover it off. Okay. Lovely. Great. Step one done. Now we're just waiting for um, this to dry. I guess I should have brought in paper, not a paper towel. Uh, okay. um, a paper blow dryer? A paper blow dryer. Um, let's talk about the moon while we're waiting. Does everybody like the moon? Should I play a song? You could play a song with When your is mom. the next full moon? You like full moons? Yeah, like when is the next full moon? play a song with my mom. Oh, <laughs> when is the next full moon? Does anyone know? I know there's one right before Halloween. That's perfect. You know what? Like there is one right before or... Halloween, and I do think that the Taurus is in full moon at times. Shout out to all the Tauruses. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a moon You're Taurus. Like a I'm a Taurus moon. Oh right, and I'm a Gemini moon. That's weird. Mm. Why are we reversed? Also, Ollie and I's birthdays are reversed too. Oh. Are we the same person? Are we evil <laughs> twins? No one knows. No one, no one's figured it out yet. Yeah. still out. Perry <laughs> is still out. Um, all right, yeah, that's an uneven framing job, but this is a no worries here. So you can keep working on yours. You know, you know the next step or two to go on. Yeah. So maybe let's move over um, the splash zone to over to another, either to you or to another spot of the room. That way, we can, yeah, I can clean up those rooms. Because <laughs> you wanted to okay. put a few more pieces, maybe on a few. Yes. Minutes. Yeah. Because I'm doing multi. Sounds good. So I'm just gonna move this onto an always chair. And then um, that Sweet. can be your little area that you splash on. So October 28th is the next one. Alright. We'll just need to adjust our... <laughs> need to clean our spot a little bit. Someone made a mess here. <coughs> I don't know who it was. But we'll need to go to paper. <laughs> um, so prior to us um, getting the cap on as well, we were talking a little bit about paintbrushes and kind of what paintbrushes we'd recommend, which one we'd use. Um, and it's always, I don't know, I find it subjective to who is using it. Like what you're comfortable with. Myself, I like using some small ones normally for whatever I'm doing. Um, that's not very economical, I guess, if you're going into a large painting. That's what I'm comfortable with and what I like. For watercolor, I have a few brushes that I'm very particular for that I really enjoy using. Um, they are going to be um, like a round one that's kind of round and flat at the top. I like these ones. Influencer. Oh, here. <laughs> I hope your hands are in there too. They are. Good. <laughs> this is a POV. Give me. They're slightly sticky because someone spilled earlier. Um, I don't know what that's all that that's about. All the more interesting. <laughs> so, um, you can see too, we're waiting for this to dry. So this is where I'm chatting. Yeah. Here you go. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Yes. So different brushes, so um, Ollie took them and then got yeah. back there. So yeah, there's the rounder one at the top. I like one that's quite round, um, like fully like circular that you can grab a lot of water with if you're wanting to do any wet on wet mediums or if you're wanting to do a technique where you make it all quite wet on your paper, which is quite wet and wet, and you just will grab blobs of color, that is the appropriate word, it's a blob, and drop them onto where you're putting your piece. Um, and then that's quite nice too because then you're able to uh, get like this nice spread out effect. And that's what I want to do on the moon, I believe. That's my, my method on the moon. Um, I'm going to grab a piece of something I can fan my paper with. Which is also another piece of paper for you all, if you'd like. Uh, yeah. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, I feel so good. Thank you. Keep going. <laughs> I got strong <laughs> I guess me and Ollie would freeze. <laughs> yeah, it's always so cold in here. Oh, yeah? Oh. Can I ask, would a hair dryer work really yes. well? It would work really well. We also have one across the hall at Studio Centro that if anybody feels like getting it, we could. But also, we don't need to. We don't need it. We don't need it. It'll dry over time. It really just depends because we did add like the kind of the droplets on there. And also, too, you know, if a lot of you don't want, if you want your stars to kind of like blend a little bit, then you could just start painting right away. Um, or you could let them fully dry. That's another thing to do. I'm not sure it's stars, it could be anything else. I think it's like cool, like um, fog or mist or something in that. Yeah, it could be there. But um, if you are ready to paint instead of waiting for your stars to dry, or if you haven't decided on stars at all and you're just going to town and painting right now, oh my, that is a beautiful rich color you're getting right there. That is the nice part about these mixing palettes. Ooh. So I don't know if you can get the camera on there, Ollie, to see yeah, how okay. it's reacting to cake painting. So, which is a great thing too. So I would say if you are wanting to do like the night sky with big bright moons, you will want a lot of contrast. And the contrast is going to be the whiteness, like the blue, versus how dark you are making your sky. So um, Kate is using this beautiful dark blue, and as she goes over those splashes and stars that she made, or if we're calling them stars, or if we're calling them space gas. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> <laughs> I took everything in me not to make that part sound. Um, but it, it's cool because it like it repels the the watercolor and also it's kind of nice too because you are adding so much pigment and the the material you're using is so rich like the the, the pigment of the watercolor it kind of makes the, the spots over a little blue too but this is nice that you can see using less water using more water um really what works for your method best and i'm not really gonna teach too much on like the watercolor technique mm -hmm. itself i'm really just talking about masking techniques and types of um, different ways you can use watercolor and trying different materials with the watercolor. So I think my patience level is that I'm going to do it for But um, yeah, once you're done with your um, stars and you're done with cutting the moons out, um, add in your watercolor paint. So okay. if that makes a method that you're wanting to do, like for myself, sometimes I have like lighter color that I start with and I do a full wash on the back that I want to do. Um, and then I can add in a few more darker colors. But I really am loving this dark color that Kate's using. So I think I'm also going to do it too. Um, the other thing I will mention as well is that once our, we remove our moon, there isn't anything protecting the moon and the sky to blend. So kind of when you go closer to the moon, maybe be a little mindful of that and make it a little lighter so it almost looks like it's glowing. Or you could have it just again that really stark contrast, but that's going to be, you know, that pop of color that you have. It's the moon and the big, big bright part. Um, but you can also see straight black in the sky, which is also what I might do. I might start with some blues and then go right for black. We'll see. The world is my moon. Mm. That's what I say. Does it matter which way you're going? <laughs> no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So I like kind of using like little circular motion for mine, but that's just my style of watercolor painting. You can do like straight across, you can do like X's if you want to. Whoa, I love the triple moon. That is so, so cool. Yeah, I like this, this really dark, dark black. Oh yeah, there's some already in here, and I think this is the black. Yeah, it's, and it's also dry enough that it's in the table. You have the moment of. Uh, you have some watch. I'm adding a little bit of like light blue to the background of my black night sky um, to try and kind of make it look like little galaxies or nebulas. I'm not an astronaut, so I don't know the proper words, but I'm making it look a little spacey, sciencey. Maybe I'll throw a D 
Then they can put it in a textbook. Oh, wow. No, the cover of a textbook. I wow. am making the cover of a textbook. It's going to say geology rules. <laughs> geology? <laughs> Not astronomy? <laughs> <laughs> Just seeing if you're paying attention. <laughs> I love the blue background. That's a really, really nice And it's the color. simplest thing to do is just mm -hmm. to put the darker blue and then more water. Inside. More water, and yeah. That's a great idea and comment on it. On how to use the water. Okay. Oh my. That's very cute. Yeah. Wow. Well, come around and show the different techniques. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're all kind of working with different techniques, so that's a really great. So great to have multiple people doing these workshops too, even if we have like just one person facilitating, because you get to see so many different techniques, see one that maybe is close to what you do, or one that's completely different. If you have a totally different way of doing watercolor, put it down in the comments. This is a live video, you can see. And if you have a question about what we're doing too, more than welcome to, to shout it out in there and Ollie will read it and yes. inquire. And even if we're not live, we will check the oh, comments. Yes. So we, <laughs> if you're confused, we can still respond later. <laughs> if you're confused, I apologize. Oh, this blue is so nice and dark. It's crazy that we have like, this how vibrant. Ooh. Yeah, loving. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. See, it, this is the thing where, you know, you got three moons in your, but you know what? There are planets with three moons. So that is one thing. But you have all this, like, other colors mixing in, really getting spacey. This is more like, I'm seeing this moon from Earth and seeing this beautiful sunset. Mm -hmm. And then, it's like, the sun's like, moon, step aside. I'm here. I'm ready to show the world my glory. I don't know what this means. Yeah. You can also do a moon during the day. I feel like that's less... That's popular. That's that also true. Still exists. I always, whenever I see the moon out during the day, I always think, oh my goodness, it's nighttime. No, no, it's daytime. What are you doing here? It's more subtle than the dark, dark colors, but it's kind of delicate. Mm -hmm. As I just like pan over everyone's backs <laughs> to get by. <laughs> So if you find that you've added too much color to a spot, you want to lift that up. Like I have a lot of really dark color there. Um, I will try to then immediately come back to use Use up all of oh, yeah, paper I towels. Yeah. I definitely use all of paper towels when I spilled earlier. Um, so there are some still by my feet that are half used. <laughs> But I'm um, just adding, a, doing a little bit of dabbing around the moon. I want to try and have an illusion that it's like glowing at night. And I don't know if it's going to, you know, turn out and work, but that's kind of the fun of art, is you don't know until you do it. So I'm kind of copying this cube and we're dabbing here. But I like, um, if you can see that there, I'm going to move it closer there. I like how it goes from this dark yeah. there to when you're dabbing it. It kind of also makes like a little bit of a texture to it. And I really think that's cool. So I love that. I really cool the colors that you have going on there. And this looks so peaceful. Okay, you might want to make sure yours to dry a bit. Um, if you want, you can always run just to feel something to the bottom. Um, yeah, good ventilation. You can use nature's blow dryer, your lungs. Mm. <laughs> I like with good ventilation. <laughs> like, don't, don't make people very sick. But like, yeah, you know, it's an option. I don't know what I'm trying, but I'm adding some brown into my style. I was trying to think if it would make it like a smoky color. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> This is, this is what you see a lot of times at Studio Central, is people will sit around with their piece. And I'll just sit and shake it. It's <laughs> start technique. Yeah. The thing is, though, it is kind of, it's really good to have breaks during your art making and to take breaks. 
because I find myself, if I'm working on something and I'm kind of getting frustrated with how it looks, I have a tendency to keep adding more and to keep working at it. I feel like I would have a lot better of a time if I just took a step back, took a viewing distance, saw from far what it looked like. Otherwise, sometimes you put poo in the sky. <laughs> no one wants poo skies. <laughs> no blue sky. No blue sky. <laughs> like a blue sky? Mm, no. Blue sky. That's Billie Eilish. <laughs> <laughs> She's on the radio. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I wish it was in the thing though. That I couldn't hear. No. no. Um, there was a fellow at Studio Central yesterday. And they sat there and were like, I just need a moment to be able to sit and think as I listen to a song and I'm going to teach myself this song. And they sat, they listened, they kind of hummed a little bit, and then they got up and were like, okay, I'm done. And they got up and left the piano downstairs and played the whole song. Beautiful. Beautiful. Portage Place is really lucky that we have that piano. I think it creates such a nice atmosphere. Ooh, I like the blues. This, these blues are just so pretty. They're green! Uh -huh. mm. Do you have both eyes closed? <laughs> <laughs> I love that technique. <laughs> I'm just dabbing. <laughs> dabbing is, yeah, I like dabbing. That's kind of a, a technique I enjoy doing for watercolor too. This is, um... I like that it takes a little bit of time to dry and it kind of changes as it's drying. So a lot of times when I put my color down right away, I'm like, oh gosh, I do not like it. I bet you keep working. Ooh, it's radiant. Um, oh, what's your favorite thing about the moon? Um, to put you on the spot. Things. Um, I love so many things about the moon. Mm -hmm. Because I, I know so many things about the movie. Oh, what would you like to share? Yeah, share. Tell, yeah. <laughs> Tell us. I'm yeah. so glad. Yeah. No. You, you studied the moon, right? I, yeah, I'm actually, uh, Ask I have a, have, a, have a degree in the moon. <laughs> When I had a child, no, when I was a child, I did not have a child. When I, had a child. <laughs> when I was a child, she doesn't have kids, folks. Um, <laughs> um, I had my friend and I had this story. I don't know where it came from. That Bigfoot would come to the sandbox at night, and he'd pick, pull up a big ladder and get cheese from the moon. Where would he put the cheese after? Would I have you eat, eat it. I guess oh. I don't know. Well, I mean, you gotta get your cheese from somewhere. I don't know what we did with that story, but I remember being prominent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, did you tell other people the story? I, it was like during daycare. Mm. Um, this is a core memory. Uh, probably told the daycare teacher, what are they? Caregivers? Yeah. Babysitters? Babysitting. Depends on what type you go to. Mm -hmm. you, you went to Montessori. Yeah. I went to the YMCA after school program. Oh. <laughs> I feel like I didn't put my name down um, 100%, so I might have a little lip underneath some of I like how uh, the moon lights mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. oh, shines up stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sometimes, um, well, I haven't been camping really much this year at all, but when I do go camping, yeah. um, do you ever have to go to the bathroom and you're in a tent and you're like, oh god, I gotta go out, but it's so dark and I'm so scared. You go out and sometimes if the moon's big enough, it's like daytime. Yeah. So it's so bright because there's no other like lights around, so the moon just illuminates mm -hmm. the stars. Mm -hmm. And of course you see all the satellites. <laughs> <laughs> They're called shooting stars, right? <laughs> That's slow moving. moving. It's slow moving. <laughs> 
I do know there's a dark side to the moon. Oh. And the temperature varies, right? Ooh. That's a, a, a fact. And also a Pink Floyd song. That's yeah. so true. true. There's a lot of craters I, on the moon that you can see from. That's true. Yeah. I love taking photos of the moon. Ooh. How do you successfully capture its beauty? Zoom in really far, turn my shutter very short so it can capture the light of it. Ooh. It's very hard to do because my camera can't manually focus on it or can't automatically focus mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. And I can barely see it myself. Because then when I take the photo, I have to edit it so it's bigger and closer. So, But I've gotten some decent photos of the moon. Nice. It's a fun challenge. Perhaps you should share some of that photo voice this month. I can actually do that. <laughs> I'll, I'll print one out. Ooh. Yes. That's when you know you're committed to photo voice. Build a YouTube channel. Photo voice is uh, hosted at Studio Central the last Friday of each month. And it's kind of like Writer's Circle, but with photos. And we'll get together, we'll maybe have a theme for the month. We always try to have a theme, kind of share the theme the week of. Um, I really could share, share it earlier so people can like go out with me and take the photos. But I think this this might have to just be spooky. I don't know what our, our theme is going to be. Um, spooky's a good thing. Mm. I remember didn't last year we pulled one for the next photo voice like in the end of October and then we got spooky for November. Um <laughs> wait, oh that's funny. <laughs> that we just got spooky then. Uh, oh, we're looking at it. Oh it's beautiful. That's mine. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, what a magical moment. So when we do these live streams, do you, um, Upbeat Artworks is closed. We have the door shut. We have these beautiful glass doors if you haven't been before the place and seen it before. Um, so folks can kind of come along and peer in to see what we're doing. And also peer in through these beautiful artworks. So we have an There's so much brown in here, but it's a nice sky to me. Yeah, it's nice. It's kind nice. of. It feels very like deep in the thing, and I, I like that we all have a little bit different. Not a little bit different. I think a lot different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, now the game is just waiting for your piece to dry. Following that, we will remove that circle or three circles if you have. And um, from there, we add in some detail to the moon. So it could be anything you want, really. If you want to just leave it white under the color of the paper, you can do that. Um, if you'd like to turn it into a mixed media piece and you want to go in with acrylic, um, that might be a really great and cool technique, too. The one thing I will always note is that because watercolor, once it's dry, it normally will stay on your page just fine. Um, and that's kind of maybe a reason some people don't like watercolor too much is that you can't, you know, paint over top of it. Um, but if we've used a lot of dark colors specifically around the moon, Kate, I don't think you're going to have this problem because you have this beautiful yellow glow already. For myself, I have a lot of very dark colors and it's still kind of drying you can see those little dark, dark spots. Those will all lighten up a bit, but that's all the black there. That color may or still... <laughs> on the moon um, area or the perimeter around it. So when I peel this off and I do add in, if I do want to do like a wet or wet medium or a technique, I do have to be careful around the edges because that color might blend in. So just be wary of that. I'm going to do it still and I might have the color blend, that's okay. But um, if you don't want that, then that'll kind of lose my piece in your mind. Um, just be cautious of it. But for that reason, I did bring these watercolor pencil crayons. And watercolor pencil crowns are such a cool tool. I like how it works that we have together. Cool tool. And um, you can use them just as a little pencil crown. You can even leave them just as that too. You don't need to add water to it or not. But something I enjoy doing with these is you can actually color very, very light and kind of shade over an area. 
And then with the clean brush and clean water, not this black water that you would have here, um, you can just rub over the color slightly and it blends it in very, very nicely. It's almost like it's its own blending tool to the watercolor from the pit. So I grabbed just a few. I just have like grays and some yellows. And I thought if anybody wanted to add details for like craters of the moon, um, that's what these pieces could be. Wow, but we have one moon removal happening now. Oh my goodness. It's exciting. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Nice. Cool. So yeah, once the once the area around your moon is drier, you can remove that. I'm gonna wait just a little bit because I still have some here. Um but yeah, you can remove that and see what you want to do with the moon. I for my other piece, I have I clean the floor because there's garbage on top of it. A technique that you can do is when you have your moon all, um, like you do a red or white technique, then you can load up the bigger brush like this with that color, and then you can kind of drop color in certain areas and let them fade out. And that kind of creates an illusion of like craters in the moon. Should we use some of this to have in there? If you'd like to, you're more than welcome to. Then that can also be used as craters. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you can use as craters. And then I would say, because you want your moon still to be a lighter color, so you could definitely still have that stuff. You could paint with it a little bit if you want. You can use the same brush there, but it's kind of thick. So you can like add, like you can like, tap a circle into it. Kind of big mm -hmm. I add some more onto of this. Of course, you can try. I don't know if it's going to lighten any color, but okay. experiment with it. Awesome. You want that brush? Yeah, that brush. Mm -hmm. Just breaking up the bristles a little bit. There we are. And yeah, I'm still just let mine dry a little bit. Yeah, so you're just adding a slight bit of color and being cautious around that edge. And that's if you want to keep that really crisp line of an edge. But the illusion. Oh, that's great, still yeah. The illusion of the white is also going to have that illusion of glowing, not the illusion of the light, but the white is going to add that illusion of glowing mm -hmm. around the moon. I'll try the pencil and then see how mm -hmm. it I never tried this. Yeah, definitely. You never tried this. Not this. this. <gasps> no. Mm -hmm. Wow. Exciting. Yeah, they're great. So you can actually just color it right away. You mm -hmm. don't need to dip it in the water. No. No, you can just add on there and then you can add on the color following. Uh -huh. Always make sure if you are using watercolor pencil crayons from a shared art supplies area, make sure that the pencil crayons you're adding are in fact watercolor because they do get swapped sometimes. I'm going to try um, removing this now. There's also lots of fun myths about the moon that you can play with. Mm -hmm. The man in the moon. Yeah. Bunnies on the moon. Bunnies on the moon. That's the only one I know. Cheese on the moon. I was gonna say cheese on the moon. Bigfoot on the moon. Oh, Bigfoot. <laughs> Collecting cheese. Oh, Were you not listening to my story? <laughs> yes, I did. That is that's Pink Floyd on the moon. Pink Floyd on the moon. I think I'm gonna be similar to you. I'm gonna use watercolor. Um, oh, I'm glad I did. I got some of the lettering. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. So you can see on mine, my tape wasn't perfect, so I have a little bite taken out of the moon. That's okay, that's where a crater is. So there's character. You harvest need a little too much cheese. Look at that. Whoa! There we go. I'm sure it, uh, that pops out so well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am going to do a very light hand and just do a very light shading around here um, to get my general color going. And then I think I'll do that technique where I drop a bit of color in after it's like all wet here. Um, just to get a crater or two and then let it dry. It'll probably take a moment or so to dry, so we may need for time's sake to take photos after and share in true live stream fashion. That is, I'm excited to see how that turns out. That would be cool. <laughs> right. I was thinking that too, like especially with the, um, right? Like the shape creates really good craters. Yeah. They do I think I'll crater myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put your crater on. I can get my crater on. <laughs> so, um, fun technique we've been trying out. Also, these brushes over here. Yeah, those were another workshop. Awesome. 
form of a technique, just adding like yeah. circles or squishing, squishing the painting. Question? Why is the rest so weird? <laughs> In there. No, you can't use a. Whoa! I like that you've done a bunch of bright colors first. That's a great technique. Like a bunch of bright colors first, and then covering it with black. Whoa! I'm just trying to see. Oh, Nature's. Nature's blow dryer. Nature's blow dryer. I am impatient though, so we're gonna see that. Oh, that is black water. Oh, thanks. Hmm. Good. <laughs> Definitely has more cups. There's also some cool water here. Oh, and some clean water. Thank oh. you. Camera. <laughs> I just sit behind the camera and, like, <laughs> heckle <laughs> everyone. Oh. Uh. <gasps> yeah, so I just used a teeny tiny bit of the. watercolor pencil crayon and now that I'm going over to the the rough edge I'm actually pushing the color a little bit on there to kind of blend it into the edge of my moon is gonna have a little bit of a shadow um, and it's kind of gonna soften those really harsh lines but I didn't risk it being one thing because I could blend it too much and I could have black in my hand so and try your own best do it at your own Ooh, I like that I think, um, um, do you have my, do you have the close up my face on? Or do you just see the table? You can see everything. I can zoom in as, as so needed. Zoom in your face is for everybody. So yes, I'm doing my little, little flipping, my wrist flip technique for the lighter um, application of this. I'm so terrible at zooming in on this. Just stroking the screen for a little bit. <laughs> I think I would just pinch it too much. I'm like, why is it? Well, because like everything moves around you when you're trying to move. Yeah. It's weird. I think my moon is almost made of cheese. Not fully almost. made of cheese, but it's like yellow and not like gray rock. I think we're all. Ooh, that's a powerful moon. We're all, we all have different moves. And the thing is, it's fine because all the planets have different moves. So just because your moon doesn't look like the moon that looks when you look up, you know, it could be a different part of the solar system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You could be looking at it from a different planet. I'm sorry that my brush is like just. <laughs> Grab some more paint. Ooh, aggressive. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. How, how is there still the yellow on that? That's such a great pigment. Constellations are fun. We could have planned that out too. Let's try like a set constellation. But again, just constellations in our solar system, or that we can use on Earth, is probably so many more. Too much water, um, you can just dab it off on them. But I found when I just like add it to the back of my hand. 
I do that. I'm going to get closer again to see how it's doing. Oh, all the colors. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what planet this is, but I want to <laughs> live on I it. Wanna, yeah, I want to go there. <laughs> Trying to go over people's heads, but then I'll actually let's see when someone's in the house. Oh. So I'm Maybe moving around. <laughs> I'm moving around some color that I added with this there, so you can see the color. Thing. Serious color. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Circular motions to blend it in. That's my favorite color. <laughs> I wonder if it's even picking up on the camera because it's so a light. It's probably bit. like I'm just like, yeah, I'm just painting some white. Mm -hmm. This is where my risky biscuits comes in because I'm putting a little bit of water around the edge to soften these very harsh lines. But I might accidentally do too much. So, is there such a thing as too much? Depends on who you ask. Oh, wow, I like the technicalities. Oh, wow. Ooh, cool, yeah. Adding in some black there, too. Mm -hmm. Have some music. Oh, there we go. I think for me, I might take a, a break from my knee, like after I just get the general coloring and everything down. Just so again, like I said, it's important to take a breather and see what you're doing. Um, but I will do the best part, which is taking the tape off so you can see the border. Because that is the best part of anybody's um, experience watercolor. You just Bigfoot prints. 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 Bigfoot
Well, yeah, very cheesy. Very cheesy. Yeah. So the oh, after it dries too, like you can always add in with like paint pen or acrylic. Maybe I'll make a little rocket ship with a mouse going to this big footprint. Big jump. With his ladder. <laughs> he's a ladder. Oh, add a ladder. What? Oh, what? Oh, 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 just a ladder? <laughs> How are you getting to space? A ladder. <laughs> a it's a really ladder. big ladder, and he's got really big feet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does he know how many miles it is from Earth to? I don't think you need to know how many miles it is to travel them. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get through when we get through. You don't need to know how many miles it is to travel. Just go. Spoken like a true, true traveler. I don't know how many miles it is to the bus stop, but I walk it every day. It's probably <laughs> less than one. <laughs> Almost certainly. Hopefully. Um, I would say... I don't know anything about miles. What kilometers? Half a kilometer? <laughs> That's oh, not I right know. at all. That's not right at all. Um, like if somebody asked me how many kilometers an hour I walked, I would say... One thing no, I learned um, traveling is that it's a Canadian thing to use time as a measurement of distance. It'll take 25 minutes to get there. Yeah, it's 25 minutes away. People mm -hmm. don't understand that. And I'm like, I have no way. Well, it depends on conversation in my head. It depends on how fast you're going, I guess. It depends on how fast you're going. It depends on who's driving. <laughs> it depends on who's driving. <laughs> Transportation. Um, yes, that's right. Like it's ladder. a ladder. <laughs> that's ladder. Right. I would say just as long as it takes to get up the rungs. Um, well, you don't know how fast he goes up the ladder. <laughs> no. No. Oh my God. Do you? <laughs> I haven't seen it myself, but I imagine it's very fast because yeah. he does it every night. <laughs> how would they put white frosting? Um, I would say either acrylic paint. Or when it's fully dry, you can do like a paint pen that's white. Puffy white. Yes, just on the grass. Puffy white grass. Well, I'm going to let my melon be drying for a moment, but what I'll do is I'm going to take off my border. That's the surprise. Just paint a little bit through. That happens. No worries. A little blip. It's character. It's character. It's character. Mm -hmm. Just try scratching it off. Or scratching it into the paper and then just... The three moons are being revealed while we're distracted. <gasps> oh. Oh. I know what you mean. Where is it? <laughs> I know. Where oh. is that thing? Is it somewhere in here? Is it there? Oh, the knife is going to be up there. Right here.
Happy with that. Um, yeah, I think we're great. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna add a little, I'll have to add like a little mouse going to the like this. But I think what we'll do is we'll also, people can keep working on theirs, um, add on any like extra white dots if they want to, adding water to it, and we'll take some photos, add them up as normal if we need to. Um, yeah, that's all. Thanks for joining. Very exciting to be alive one more time with all of you.